Welcome back to the channel. We've been talking about the uniqueness of the 20B motor the past couple days and some of what might be interchangeable when you're building custom three rotors like subbing in 13B rotor housings or other 13B parts. So I thought I would continue the discussion today and talk a little bit about the uniqueness and variations that there are in the thick plate of the Cosmo 20B. And this is the factory Mazda casting uh, that Mazda made. And there were multiple generations. There were a no code A, B, C, and D. And as you got later in that codage, meaning you got into the C and D codes, you actually got a fatter or bigger casting here. And if you're familiar with rotaries, it's this upper dowel area that is an oil gallery, so you're carrying oil through there, that is prone to failure. And it can fail due to block fatigue, due to twisting, one of the reasons we stud the motors, or it can fail due to detonation, um, or prolonged abuse and exposure to maybe not the best uh, operating conditions or driving conditions. Either way, it's this thin area right here that the rotor housing is pushing on by expanding under compression and boost that ends up cracking. And because this is an oil feed, an oil gallery itself, the oil's coming down from the back of the motor into uh, a channel that is actually feeding, right here you can see that little oil hole, feeding the main bearing um, of the 20B. And uh, it's also interesting that the 20B main bearings have a slightly smaller orifice um, on their center bearings and run a uh, three window style bearing versus uh, the main front and rear, which are a uh, multi-hole and have a slightly bigger orifice. Now, on most of my builds, I go and polish and port match all of these orifices and uh, open up uh, this center bearing a little bit. Um, but I've always thought to myself, it's interesting that they went with a bearing uh, that potentially displaces more oil under slightly higher pressure. Um, but when we're building race motors, when we're building custom blocks, not maybe an OE restoration where we would leave everything alone and just go with basic replacement, but on a race motor, um, we'll actually opt to open those passages up a little bit, port match them, but we're also increasing oil pressure and oil volume on the pump and regulator side. So you wouldn't want to displace more oil or alter oil flow um, without also considering that you may need more oil flow or volume or pressure to coincide with those changes. But it's part of the uniqueness of the 20B itself uh, that was made by Mazda because this is the only multi-rotor casting available to the public. Although you can't buy them new anymore, um, when you could, the 20B, the Cosmo 20B, the sedan that was not available in the U.S., but available elsewhere in the world, um, contained these multi-rotor, these three-rotor motors, and uh, outside of that motor, these motors, I don't believe Mazda produced anything other to the public other than two rotor motors, uh, 10As, 12As, 13Bs, Renesis, things along those lines. Although Mazda did make four rotors, I mean, big legacy there, the Le Mans cars, the four rotors were never available to the public, and they were unique as in were the cars, meaning each four rotor series that Mazda developed was tied around the cars they were developed for. So a lot of the times the castings were altered and the motors are unique um, in their oiling systems, in their casting designs, and their plate configurations of thickness. So when Mazda developed the Cosmo 20B, the three rotor, um, I think with all of their testing, everything they were considering to put something into a production platform, production use, non-racing, they opted for a very strong and robust casting, although it is prone to failure in this oil gallery. Um, in performance use, obviously with studying and proper building, you can avoid that. Um, it was designed, I think, intentionally strong. Um, and that's been one of the aspects that's made the 20B um, in its OEM form desirable. 
Um, and I happen to have one of the billet ink motors right here that we could talk about in comparison. And you can see a lot of the design features um, are built into aluminum block motors, meaning the casting area that was prone to failure is now uh, CNC'd in in a more robust area. And this actual block is an earlier design, so I think they've actually gotten bigger with those areas. Same with the back of the block. Um, and they opt for solid uh, dowels, um, so you eliminate that expansion, uh, torsion, and twisting of the uh, motor's uh, uh, percussion and order, one, two, three, so you're not firing all at the same time, so you actually have load variation as it's going against those housings. So in the uh, billet application, you end up with a solid dowel pin all the way through, um, and then moved oiling. So more like an aftermarket four rotor, it's now oiled externally, um, opting for the most strength possible in billet form. But again, one of the reasons I like OEM 20Bs, why I think uh, in the proper application, they can be very reliable um, and, and very fun to use um, because you maintain your OEM oiling, um, OEM cooling, um, and it's very interesting how much time Mazda put in into the design um, the webbing that resides inside this casting is actually quite impressive. And a lot of this webbing is what gives uh, this bearing carrier plate its inherent strength that the thinner plates, uh, when modified, don't have nearly as much of. Um, and you can see just how much work Mazda puts in. Um, and also with the ability to uh, be removed, installed, um, replaced and easily worked on. Uh, but it is notable that, you know, when you look at your, your front and rear mains, you can note that the uh, normal hardware is a little bigger and the torque specs are different. So it's always important to uh, keep an eye on your center bearing hardware, make sure that you're not dealing with any stretched bolts. A lot of the times I'll replace these. These aren't available new from uh, Mazda and Mazda Trick still. Um, as where uh, the same specs over here uh, get a little easier to uh, rely on because you've got bigger hardware. So you can see that Mazda also was considering that with the amount of bolts they put in. I've never had any issues with the hardware. I think it's always just something that I've looked at as an engine builder and somebody who races these motors and gone, okay, I got to keep an eye on this hardware. I've got to keep an eye on this bearing. I've got to keep an eye on this oil flow because this is a crucial part to keeping a 20B alive, keeping this center bearing oiled. Um, if you were to have a failure in the center rotor or the residing rotors to this housing, it could cause uh, damage to the side plate. Um, so at all costs, we're trying to do everything possible to maintain structural reliability um, and intern internal engine reliability when we build 20Bs because at this point, um, and I think continued into the future, um, the rarity of these OEM parts will only grow. And for anybody looking to do restorations or just have the reliability of OEM components, um, I think we'll continue to seek these out, pay a premium, um, and wish that Mazda had never discontinued them. But it is just you know, known that at this point, um, you know, you could literally buy one of these aftermarket uh, billet plates. Uh, you know, this one's from Billet Inc. Um, so you could get your thick bearing carrier in aluminum and then basically build everything uh, 13B or 13B Cosmo from there out with proper machining, proper technique, port matching, um, and everything considered. So just continuing the discussion, I thought we'd talk a little bit about the uniqueness, like I said. Um, and just uh, what Mazda did when they designed this, which was a very strong, reliable component, because if you think about it, this component's at this point um, approaching, I believe it's 30 years old, and uh, we're still using them in race motors, and they're still setting records. Um, and although, like I mentioned in the previous video, uh, there are short crank versions of three rotors where you can actually use the 13B center plate uh, machined to uh, fit a modified uh, stationary gear. Um, in my experience, I haven't seen anybody make as much horsepower under boosted application 
um, that the OEM 20Bs or thick plate aftermarket billet motors make by comparison. But I think, uh, again, always saying that in the right application, every motor has its home. And uh, obviously, the short crank motors are very cool, and we'll talk more about those. But I hope that this has been fun. This has been educational. You know, we're always talking the BRAP. We want to keep the rotaries alive. And uh, a big part of keeping three rotors alive is maintaining your center thick plate because these are discontinued, they're rare, they're expensive. You don't want to mess up your center plate. All right, that's a wrap. Always looking for the questions. Make sure to check out the website, new merch, lots of porting templates, um, and we're going to have more inventory on KMR soon. Um, you can always ask about OEM parts, but always make sure to check out Mazda Tricks. They've got the massive inventory and are always so nice to let us borrow cool parts that they have so we can discuss them on the channel. So, yeah, thanks. Check out KMR. Check out Mazda Tricks. That's a brap. I'm going to go brap it up. Brap on out of here. Time to go home. <laughs>